Welcome back to the IE427 garage everybody. We are pushing forward on the 25th anniversary car. I have been um, working on getting the last few aluminum panels that need to be mounted on the chassis fit, drilled, clecoed, and then finally riveted in. So hang with me and we'll bring you right back and catch you up. Alright gang, so here is what I've been working on the last couple days. Um, I wanted to get all of the aluminum in the back of the car buttoned up so that we can trudge forward and start getting some of the heat and sound mat put in the car. So all of these rear panels have now been put in. The drop box is secure and in place. These last few rivets along this line here and along the back here are what give the um, drop box all its strength because without those, this, this back corner over here kind of just floats there. So that's all in. It's all in place. It's looking good. We've got our fuel pump all squared away. I think we showed that in the last video. So that um, Pro-Am hanger is in place. I've got the wire harness terminated. And then I went ahead and um, finished up all of the cushion clips that needed to be done underneath the trunk floor. So I got those in from underneath. One word of caution to those of you out there that have the DA, the dual adjustable coilovers that are the Coney's from Factory 5. Since these mount in the upper hole, getting these panels on is nearly impossible. I mean, I probably could have finagled them in there, but with um, wet silicone, black wet silicone on top of all that, that I didn't want to get all over the bronze powder coated chassis. What I ended up doing is I ended up jacking the back of the car off the ground so that the load on the suspension was taken off. I pulled the bolt out um, on the side it was working, so I did it one at a time. And then after I got the panel in place, I went ahead and I put the bolt back in and resecured it. The last word of caution that I'm going to tell you is I pulled off the washers that were out on here. Um, and this is not a dig against the owner. It's just something that I myself do. Factory 5 gives you washers. I believe they give you washers for both sides of this. The problem is you start putting those washers on and stacking up that thickness, and there's not enough bolt sticking out of the end of this even with a nylock nut on it that I'm comfortable with. I like to see two or three in this case four threads out of the end so I'm sure that that thing has engaged the nylon locking portion of the nut at the fattest portion of the bolt. If you just run it on and it's just flush with the end that nylon is only locking in the tapered portion of the nut. And uh, I'm not I'm not comfortable with that. So I removed the washer. There was one washer on this side when I pulled it apart, and I'm I'm thinking that there were probably two washers because I just ran across another build, and there were washers on that. Now see out here in the front, we've got just a, about a thread and a half showing. So I may or may not take that washer off. Um, like I said, I just like the bolt to project the th through the end of that uh, nut enough that I'm, I'm, I'm more than confident that that nylon has engaged um, to, the, to the largest portion of the, of the bolt. So that's just a tip for you. The, the, the biggest one being with the dual adjustables, you do have to either install those panels first or you have to pull that bolt out in order to get the panel in. But the panel's in. It looks good. Um, one of the last few things that I'll have to do here in the back, I did run the vent hose for the gas tank. It's right here. I've just got it zip-tied to the gas tank right here now. We do have our new seal for the filler neck end. And then um, I've got to mount the charcoal canister here on the back. So that's going to go right in here. I'll probably be doing that in the next couple of days. But... Um, the panels on the outside, they're looking pretty good. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm 
pretty happy with the way all of these panels have come together so far and uh, I think uh, in the end it's going to really look sharp. What I'm working on now is that I'm working on finishing off the panels on the tunnel and I think I've told everybody before but if you haven't watched our videos in the past I'm going to tell it to you again. Don't be afraid to step outside uh, the boundaries of the box meaning if you, if you need to get a, fan, a panel fit in place so it's not going to move, use some of these self-tapping screws. You know, Factory 5 puts a lot of the panels on with just a, you know, a self-tapping sheet metal screw or two on each panel to hold them in place for shipping. Hold on to those. And then if you get in a position like this, because that panel, you know, it, it, it's... They put it in a break and they bend it, but it's not always at the perfect angle. And that one has one, two, three, four bends on it. So what you're going to find is when you go to fit that, with a little bit of pressure, you can get that panel to conform to all those different shapes and all those little angles. But as you try to drill it, there's, you've got nothing to hold it in. So what I did is I held it against the back cockpit wall. I ran a self-tapping sheet metal screw in. And then I pushed it against the side where I wanted it. And then I ran another sheet metal screw in on it. And now I'll drill the rest of the holes. And then I'll be able to Clico it in place. Now when I go to mount it for the final time, what I'll do is I'll put the silicone sealant on all the joints. I will put it in place with Clicos. And then I'll pull the Clicos out one at a time. And I'll replace those with my Popovits. And therefore, it'll be held in place. And I won't be smearing that, that silicone sealant all over the place. So that's another uh, little helpful tip for you guys. I do have a grommet that I'm installing in each one of those corner panels at the back of the cockpit to get our heated seat connectors through. And uh, I've already got the one on this side drilled. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to finish up those panels. I'll bring you back when I'm done with those. Music update. Rolling Stones. Terrifying. Um, it's the next day. I am going to... Um, Get myself a little organized here, and uh, I'll bring you guys back, let you know what I'm working on. Um, much of the same panels, cushion clips, stuff like that, so hang on, I'll bring you right back. All right, I am continuing to button stuff up on the back of the car. I uh, made a trip over to the hose shop yesterday. I dropped off two hose ends. So basically what we did is we bought the stock hoses for an 87 through 89 Ford Mustang for a power rack and we took the hose ends off of those so those are the two ends that go into the rack um, there are other products there are places that make little adapters from whatever the metric thread is that go into that rack um, to an AN and some people use those with great success I'm not one of those. I have had just the worst luck with those. Either they go in and they don't leak and then they get bumped and then they leak and then you tighten them and they still leak. So I'm not bad mouthing any product out there. If you choose to use those and they work for you, that's fine. Great. <laughs> they don't work for me. So I harvested those ends and uh, I still ended up with an extra and I think it's for a, um, oh, so it's for the power the power steering pump end of it. Um, so I'll hold on to it. I may, I may at some point um, use that on, on a different car. But um, I only needed the two ends um, for the rack side. And the return hose and connector that's on the end are getting harder and harder to find. So if I remember when I edit this video, I will include that part number. Because I looked it up on, I think it was Rock Auto. And I couldn't find it for those model year Mustang. But when I did find it, and we had the part shipped from, I think it was late model restorations, the price was four times the cost. And hey, I understand, everybody's got to make money. Um, but then I looked that part number up on Rock Auto just uh, with the parts number search, and it came up, and it was $9. So by the time we would have added shipping and everything, I think it would have been probably 20 $23, something like that, versus $40 plus for the other one that we ordered. Same part. But, so I dropped those off at the home, hose shop, and my buddy, um, uh, Jason, 
over at the hose shop is working on those for me. I should have those back in the next couple of days. I'm hoping to have some idea of how long I need the hoses for the fuel lines under hood as well so I can have him make those. Hopefully those will be ready. I can go out and pick those all up at once. But that's neither here nor there. At this point, he's working on the connector ends for me. The pump came with hoses, so we're going to use the hoses that it came with. Um, so I'm working on that. And then I'm working on some other miscellaneous stuff under hood. Uh, I started on the, uh, the engine ground, which is going to be right down here. So I've got that terminated on our ground stud. It's just kind of in there because we still have to do our main battery ground up there. And then I found a threaded boss in the side of the block right there which I believe ended up being a 10 millimeter and that's going to be our chassis to engine ground um, at the back of the car I've been working on here you go I've been working on getting the seat heater wires and connectors through the back um, cockpit wall um, this is the first time I've used this location. I'm hoping it'll work out better than the location on this sidewall that we have been using. But since I had to lengthen the wires, a couple, you know, a couple more inches of wire to get it to here seemed pretty logical. Um, there's more room behind the seat right there, so I'm hoping this will work out better. Um, so I've got that one in there. I've got the grommet installed. Um, I may or may not have showed that um, earlier in the video. The um, other side is in as well. I've got those strapped underneath the car, and I'm not going to lift the car up to show you where they're strapped. However, I did want to point out one little trick that I do, and I'm not a big fan of using tie wraps everywhere. Um, I like to limit their use. I prefer to use the kit cushion clamps, so you can see we've got cushion clamps there and there um, to hold the harness in place. But in a case like this, where you are crossing a frame member, at near a 90 degree angle. What I do is I put on one of the smaller cushion clamps. So this is for quarter inch um, like tubing. So these come uh, with a kit to use for your brake lines. So I use one of those. And then if you look, there is a tie wrap run through there. And then what I do is I use a pair of these flush cutters so that there is no tail on here to cut yourself because those things can be lethal if they're sticking out just a little bit. So I am going to continue working on the little things like this. I've got to adjust the brake, emergency brake handle extension that I put down in the tunnel because right now it is just, it's within a whisker of the A-frame transmission support. And although it's not scratching that frame, when we dropped the trans and engine in, we must have grazed it and we did put a scratch in there. So I'm going to have to touch that up with some paint. But I need to cut that, I need to cut that extension that I made down by, I don't know, half an inch. And so we're going to lose our bottom most hole for adjustment if we ever have to get those cables tighter. But I think I still have one more adjustment to drop that down if we ended up needing more cable pull. But as I stated before in a previous video, we're not going to see any pad wear because the emergency brake on the Willwoods is a separate caliper and it's only used to basically hold the car in place. So there's going to be virtually no wear on those. So other than cable stretch, um, which is a thing, we're, um, we're not going to see any wear on the pad. So I don't, I'm, I'm guessing that we're not going to have a whole lot of adjustment that we're going to need to do over time. And honestly, we're on the second click of the pull on the emergency brake handle. So, you know, we've still got, you know, half dozen, maybe, uh, maybe eight to 10 more pulls, uh, notches on that brake handle. So we're, we're, we're I think we're going to be just fine. So I'm going to probably take care of that tomorrow. I'm going to see about, machining the spacer for the transmission as well so i'm gonna go ahead and head in for the night it's about feeding time and i will catch up with you guys tomorrow all right everybody next day music update black crows horse head you probably saw in the last clip from last night that uh, some of the fat mat has started to appear inside the cockpit and uh, i figured i'd wait until i got just a little bit more done. I'm not done, finished, 
but uh, I've got a good got a good handle on it right now. I've got a bunch of little corner pieces and stuff like that to do right now, so it's going to be tedious the next couple nights. So I don't know how much of that I'm going to film, but uh, just know that uh, I did have help over the weekend from my my favorite helper, and uh, she got a lot of the the tough to do um, parts done. She concentrated on the, the driver and passenger foot box, which even with the side panel off, tends to be a little bit uh, difficult. And she got those taken care of, so I appreciate that. Um, but here you go. So um, she makes use of every cutoff piece that she can possibly use. And she is so good at seaming this stuff together. There are, you know, in most places, there are no gaps. Um, this afternoon, this evening, I've been working on the back wall, which is a lot easier to get to. The pieces are big. I mean, I'm splitting it up into pieces, though. So this is a piece. The center is a piece. The bottom side over there is another piece. And I've got two pieces up here. If you try to put this stuff in, in just like huge pieces, I mean, you can template and do, do all, all that that you want. Um, but sometimes it's just unmanageable. And I ran into that. I started um, last night or the night before working on the... Um, the floor of the driver's side and all it takes is one of those corners to touch the uh, the back meaning two pieces of the back of this get stuck together they're not coming apart so I ended up having to seam this I had this all cut across here as one piece and as I was putting it in this piece folded under and it touched itself and that was it so I ended up having to cut it in place across here and you can see I didn't do quite as well of a job as uh, my helper does putting this stuff together but i did get it uh, pieced in and uh, we're going to use seam tape on that i'm going to seam tape um, a lot of the corners there are some gaps here in the back corner here um, we always seam tape along the wall here because there's really nothing other than the seam tape holding that joint together we did put uh, black silicone on the driver's side or uh, on the on the driver's engine side and the passenger's engine side of both of those panels to finish them off but the seam tape will really help to hold it in place um, so then you can see she got uh, the piece in the front I'll work on these two little pieces here at the end she's got smaller hands and so it's easier for her to get in to some of these areas that uh, you know the pedals are in and so trying to get your your big gorilla hands like I have in there just doesn't always work so I do appreciate the help and uh, she does a really good job so um, I think she'll probably she'll probably wander out here this weekend if there's any la last pieces to do she may help me do the the heat and sound mat in the trunk but uh, I haven't decided yet whether we're going to do that this coming weekend or not but uh, just figure I'd give you guys an update on the heat and sound mat because you most likely saw it so um, there you go I'll catch up with you tomorrow night so I think I'm going to wrap this one up right here. As you can see, the cockpit is all covered in heat and sound mat. There are pieces. There are uh, 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 pieces of the puzzle all over the place. And uh, we'll just uh, work over the next couple weeks and try to get uh, the trunk here done. When uh, I'm working on something else and I have the lift down. I had the lift all the way up in the air yesterday working on another side project so I managed to get the lift down today and I, I, I was intent on getting all of the heat and sound mount in the cockpit finished up the um, the one panel that I didn't do and I'm, now I'm, I'm on the wrong side of the car to show you is the firewall extension on the passenger side and the reason that I haven't done it is I think I'm going to run the coyote harness through here i'm gonna to have to see how much room we have for the glove box and the heater so i'm going to be pulling those out in the next couple days and that will determine whether i pull the coyote stuff through here i'm hoping that if i take it through here i can kind of route the wires back through here to kind of hide them from the engine bay because that's what i'm talking about this this harness right here um, some of that has to go into the cockpit that has the uh, drive-by wire throttle cable that has the um, Clutch switch in it. It has the push to start. It has the ignition control wire All kinds of stuff are in there and we need to get that into the cockpit and right now I'm kind of up in the air and where I'm gonna do it I'm trying to keep 
as much stuff off of that side of the firewall as possible because I still have a um, fuel pressure regulator that needs to go on the firewall as well. And I'm going to run out of real estate there really quick because of the heater, the wiper motor, and all that other stuff that uh, this car is going to have in it. So, with that, I am going to end this video here. I want to thank you guys all for watching. If you're enjoying the content, please do the like, the share, the subscribe, all that good stuff. Comment if you have suggestions. Not that I'm going to listen to them, but if you have suggestions for any of the projects we're working on or if there's something in particular you want to see that we can work into what we're working on on some of the projects, let us know in the comments. We'll see you guys all next time. Have a great day.